So, you want to make a squad map. Of course you do, that's why you're here. So, let's get started. In the last episode, we talked about importing your terrain and setting up your landscape material foliage. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover editing your landscape layers and terrain holes. So, first we're going to talk about editing your landscape layers. Um, we have this great terrain in here already, but let's say this dirt, it just doesn't look how I'd like it to. So I want to edit that layer to be a different material. And thanks to the landscape material that we're using and the fact that we set it up, doing that is actually very easy. So what we're going to do is, in our folder here, we're going to go into our material functions folder. And all you have to do to edit one of your layers is open up the material function that that layer pertains to. In this case, material function underscore dirt. So what we see here looks a little complicated, but it's actually very simple. This in here, this whole area, is basically just adding some stuff together, uh, making sure that it looks good, uh, and breaking up the tiling. Um, and that's done with this. This basically just tiles a very large, splotchy black and white texture over everything, and then it combines it with the actual textures in order to make a little bit less tiling visible, um, which is a good thing because tiling can become very apparent on large flat areas of the terrain. These are the actual textures that are being used for the far ter texture and the near texture. Ideally, you would want these to be the same unless you want up close to look drastically different than far away. Um, now there's some cool stuff you can do with that, like you could have a darker texture when you get close, but Either way, uh, so we're going to be changing these to a different texture, and I'm also going to show you how to make some easy stuff to make your texture darker or a different color, and to change how your texture tiles and how far away the far and the near blend together. So the first thing we're going to try is changing your material, just the entire thing, to different textures. So we see in here there's two texture samples in the far, and two texture samples in the near, and they're both using the same textures. And this is good because we can just change them. Um, these landscape coordinates are here as well, but we'll talk about those in a moment. So we're just going to change these to something else. Now I want, I want this area to be gravel, so we're going to change it to gravel. And I'm going to do that by clicking the texture sample and changing this texture. And I already have one that I picked out and I liked uh, how it looks, so I'm just going to use the textures from that. Um, and it's this mud and gravel texture. And I'm going to use the normal map as well. And it's all very well annotated. Some things might not be as well annotated as this, but this specific material, the, it's named correctly, so it's easy to tell what's what. We're going to do that for both the far and the near. And that's pretty much all there is to it. If we apply this, and then we look at our material once it's done compiling the textures for it, which will only take a moment with any luck. I try not to waste your time. It's going to be the new material with the textures that we picked, and it should look like gravel with the correct normal maps and everything like that. So as you can see, it looks good. The up-close textures look good as well. The far-away textures look pretty good. There's a little bit of tiling there, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. However, let's say that there was really bad tiling on this. And there's, there's a little bit of tiling. You can kind of tell there's a little bit of a line right there. So what if you wanted to change how big or how small the tiling on the textures was? Because, you know, a bigger tiling will usually be cause for, you know, less, less evident tiling. So we open our material back up, and we change the tiling for the far and the near separately. And that's what this landscape coordinate is. <clears throat> Basically, this number right here, mapping scale, that's our tiling. The bigger the number, the bigger the tiling. So I want to change the far away tiling, which is right here. So I just select the landscape coordinates, and I set it to, let's say, 20. Double the tiling size. Now, all I have to do is apply it, 
and once the shaders compile then I'll be able to see that it's tiling twice as big with less evident tiling overall. Compiling shaders is definitely something you have to get used to though if you're going to be working in UE4 because it happens quite often. Even if you're not changing a material, sometimes shaders will just compile for no reason. But it usually doesn't take too long. Ah, here we are. Now if you see, it looks like we have some bigger gravel, but the tiling isn't there anymore, which is great. And when we get up close, it still looks good. Although at a median distance, it doesn't look as good. So let's say maybe we want to have the up-close texture start farther away, so that way we don't have that medium distance at all. Well, let's open up our material function again. And right in here, we can see exactly what's going on. The start distance is currently set to 200. So let's try changing it to 500. And then apply it. Once again, compiling shaders will take a moment. And if you notice, our small texture is starting quite a bit farther away. Now, obviously this is going to take some, some changing. You might want to set the small texture to a larger tiling size. You might want to the farther away uh, change the farther away texture, I'm sorry to a smaller tiling size. But now that you know what, how to do that, it's quite easy to do and it requires very little effort on your part. Mostly waiting around. So now that we've covered that, that's pretty much all there is for landscape layers. Now, if you understand UE4's material settings and how to use the material editor, then you can create some really amazing stuff with this. You're not just limited to this framework, you can create an entirely new texture from scratch. As long as it uses the same outputs, it'll work just fine with your landscape material. But there are a lot of great material, or sorry, great tutorials on UE4's material editor. So I'm not going to be teaching you that in this series. Now, there's another thing we need to talk about with landscapes before we're pretty much done with them, before I've taught you pretty much everything I know. And that's landscape holes. Um, there's some parts of the terrain where you might want to have a basement, for instance, in a building, but the building is already at the bottom of the terrain and you can't make the terrain any lower because it'll show on the edges of the building. Or maybe you want to have a cave that goes into the side of a mountain or a bunker or something like that. Now, some editors don't like that, but UE4 makes it very easy. Um, specifically, there's only one or two things you need to do to add terrain holes. However, you might just expect to be able to paint them right away, and that's not how it works. So, we need to first create a whole material for our landscape texture. And this is simply achieved by going to our actual material, right click, duplicate, and I usually name mine underscore hole. And now that we have that made, we just need to open it up, change the blend mode from opaque to masked. Which appears to have frozen my editor. And then, search for landscape visibility mask. Once we have that in there, all we have to do is plug this into the opacity mask output. And then we can save it. And that's all you need to do. Now you just select your landscape in the editor. And in your landscape's details, under landscape, there should be a slot for landscape whole material. Now, it might be hidden by default, you just have to click the Show Advanced, and it's right there. So if we just drag this into our Landscape Whole Material slot, then all we have to do is go to our Landscape tab, Sculpt, and then from the Sculpt drop-down, we just have to pick Visibility. And now we can paint visibility all over our landscape easily. 
Now I will have to compile the shaders for that specific part of the terrain, but like I said, that only takes a moment. And once it's done, you'll be able to see clearly how it works. And as we see, this part of the landscape is now completely invisible. And here I'll place in something so you can see a little better the fact that it's actually invisible and not just black. There you have it. Works like a charm. Very easy to do. That's all I have to cover in this tutorial. Um, I'm not quite sure what the next tutorial will be covering yet, but it'll probably be something besides the landscape because this is about all you need to know for editing your landscapes in UE4. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will continue to watch my tutorials. Have a good day.